Well, cool. Uh, so we're talking about Rust today. Uh, why don't you give us like a little introduction to Rust? Yeah, so uh, let's see. What can I say about Rust? So Rust is a, uh, a systems programming language. A lot of people compare it to C++. I've never written any C++, but you know that's that's what I read, and as I'm learning, that's what I'm hearing. Um, it's used for it's like more of a low level language. Uh, it's got a really interesting uh, kind of like memory, like safety guarantee. It's it's got um, this ownership model, which is it's a little confusing. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you understand it, it's like okay, you know, understanding references and memory and uh, how Rust handles memory for you, um, like allocating, deallocating memory. Uh, it's really performant. It's type safe. Um, you know, so if you're coming from TypeScript or things like that, then you know you, you feel a little bit more at home. So sure. yeah, you know, I'm I'm still learning Rust. I started maybe like a month ago, so a lot of it is still new to me. I've built yeah uh, like one or two small programs. Sweet. Yeah, every time I hear about Rust, uh, everybody seems to be like pitching it as like the performance about it. Like that's the go-to pro of Rust mm -hmm. is uh, the performance benefit you get from you from writing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's super fast, and you know, ob obviously, when we're building this program today, like you'll see for yourself, it's just like it's like wow, super like fast. you know less than a few seconds or, you know, something that might take a little bit longer in say JavaScript or TypeScript, uh, depending yeah. on what you're building. So it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. So, uh, uh, jumping right into it. So today we're doing this programming, a guessing game. Uh, it's just found right on the docs. Uh, I'm going to post in the chat. So if anyone wants to follow along with us as we do it, we're basically just going to go through, uh, step by step. Um, do you, what what is this game that we're building? So it's a guessing game. What what's the uh, the outcome? Yeah, so the outcome will be it's essentially a CLI app. Uh, so we'll run a command which will start the game. It'll okay. um, it'll say hey like guess the number, and then uh, basically it'll tell us hey your number's too low, your number's too high, or you got it right. And so it'll essentially loop until we get it right, and. Okay it'll be a number between one and a hundred and you know, we can change that obviously, but that's what we're hoping to achieve by the end of today's stream. Okay. So we're, we, we give it a number and then, cause it's, mm -hmm. it's randomly going to choose a number. We give it a number. We're yep. going to try to guess what it is. It's going to say too high, too low. We continue to guess it till we figure it out. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right, let's do it. Um, yeah. Are you still in the, uh, live share? Yeah. Got it right here. Perfect. Um, let me, let's just test this out if you can see Joe and hello. Yep. We're live. Cool. We're good. Okay. So what is step one? Uh, looking back at the, the docs here, setting up a new project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've seen, I've seen this word cargo a couple times and that's the yeah. first thing we're doing here. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what cargo is? Yeah. So cargo uh, is the package manager. Um, it's kind of like the build tool. It's kind of like the, the NPM of Rust, essentially. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we're going to use it to initialize a new project here. And then we're also going to use it to build and compile and run our program. Okay. All right. So the first thing we do, oh, you already did it. You did cargo init guessing game. Uh, oh, okay. Let's run it one more time. Okay. Yeah. Do it one more time. Okay. All right. So this is similar to saying like npm init then where it sets up like basically your directory for this game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's cool. so there's cargo new and cargo init. Uh, cargo init will run it in the current directory and then cargo new would like create a new directory for you. Um, kind of like if, you know, when you do like uh, create React app, for example, it puts it in a new directory, things like that. Okay. This one, the, the tunnel file. Yeah, so that that would be analogous to a package.json. Okay. So, you know, you're going to have the name of your program, the version. Um, you're going to have, uh, like, other things, like your the authors, the edition of Rust. Uh, so 2018 is, like, the like newest version, I guess, of, of Rust. Um, okay. And they're constantly adding new features, so it's not like it's you know, two years old. 
Um, and then we would add our dependencies and there's other keys too, but you know, these are the ones that come out of the box. Gotcha. Cool. So we have our, we've got our source, we've got our main. So I assuming, uh, we could just run something and we're going to run this main function here. Yeah. So every rust program needs a main function, uh, okay. to run. That um, reminds me of so, my one class in college of Java where I had to have a yeah. main function. Oh, same kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's different. Cause I'm like, you know, coming from JavaScript or TypeScript, like I'm, you don't need to do that. Right. You, you can call right. it whatever you want. So, right. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to, in the terminal, if you want to run a uh, cargo run, and then we can kind of talk about the output. Um, ooh, right so we need to, I think we need to uh, CD into the guessing game. Yeah. Gotcha. And then Oops, run. Wrong. Cool. Cool. So the cool thing about cargo run is if you haven't compiled yet, it will compile first and then it will run. Nice. So as we see, hello world is printed. Nice. Okay, cool. So cargo run, cargo init. So cargo's like the NPM, like you were saying. That's how we run our commands. That's how we start a start mm -hmm. our project. Got it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's the first step. We've got, we created the new guessing game. Mm -hmm. We talked about the cargo.tumble file. So this is similar to like the package.json then? Yeah. Okay. Everything, you can notice that I come from a JavaScript background when I am slowly converting everything into JavaScript terms. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, same. Okay, so yeah, so we did this first part. We did cargo.run. All right, processing a guess. Sweet. Yeah. Step one. Yeah, so let's do that. Lots of interesting syntax here, like use, double colon. Yep. All right. So, Why yeah, if you want to. On that one? Okay, you got it. So the first thing that we're going to do, I'm just going to pull these up side by side. Yeah, I'm gonna do the okay. same actually. Cool. Yeah. So let's uh let's just kind of write it out. Um, then we'll go line by line. So the first this use, um, I like to think of it as you know it's similar to, um, like a require in Common JS or like with ES modules like import a package. So, do you do you have the RLS, uh, the REST language server extension? Um, let me check. I think you should. RLS. Yes. Okay. So just out of curiosity, um, can you hover over STD in the uh, main.rs file? Over STD. There you go. Yes. I get some interesting. Tells me about it. Yes. So I think that's probably one of my favorite parts of of Rust is like, um, at least co like coming from other like like I said JavaScript or TypeScript like, you know you just kind of get this out of the out of the box. So like you know you hover over and you get this awesome kind of like Markdown explanation like the Rust standard library. So STD is the Rust standard library, okay. which comes essentially with like built in with Rust. Um, you know, it just kind of walks you through, gives you like lengthy explanations, links, examples. It's, it's awesome. So like, it's, I, I point that out because if you're new to Rust and you're trying to pick it up on your own without like a tutorial or a course or like, you know, the, the official documentation is pretty, pretty great. Yeah. Document, good documentation is always a win for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, if, and then if you hover over the IO, so Essentially, we're importing this IO module, uh, which contains things that are common for reading and writing and working with input and output. So, you know, like with the uh, command line, essentially. So, okay. So, we're importing that. Um, next thing we're going to do um, is so we'll delete this hello world. Yeah. So, this uh, print ln. So, we'll say, you know, guess the number. Uh, delete that and we'll end with the semicolon because it's the end of a line. And so the, um, so again, you know, if, if you hover over, I wonder if it'll work for print Ellen, it might not, but um, essentially this is what's called a macro. 
Um, okay. It's kind of like, like in my brain, it's kind of like a global function, but it's really not um, because it can take a variadic number of arguments. Um, okay. So essentially, you know, like we could pass in, guess the number, um, you know, and, and just to kind of show this a little bit. So we could delete number and replace it with this placeholder, which is the uh, curly brackets. And okay. then if we put a comma and then pass in, um, you know, if we had a variable called number, we could pass that in there. So you could do that with a bunch, you know, so if we had how do number, you reference the curly, how do you reference that inside the curlies? So it goes in order. So let's say, oh, so okay. let me add another one and just say like, um, I don't know, say it was called fun. And then we wanted that printed there. So obviously like if these were variable declarations, um, it just goes in order. So it'll see, okay, here's a placeholder. Here's an argument. Here's a placeholder. Here's an argument. Gotcha. So yeah. Nice. Uh, so let me delete that. Yeah, we've got guess the number. And then we've got, please input your guess. So same thing, we're gonna end with a semicolon. Um, then we're gonna do let uh, moot guess equals string uh, colon colon new. Okay, talk us about what's, what's going on with that. Let moot and guess. Okay, so everything by default, like all like variable declarations and everything is immutable, like by okay. default, right? Okay. So us using this moot keyboard essentially says, hey, this is mutable. Okay. So that's, so that's that. Um, second part we got right here, so string. Um, so, so if you hover over that, you'll see some documentation. So the string type is the most common string type. Um, yada, 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 kind of gives you an example. Um, so this colon colon is essentially accessing a method that's defined on the string struct. Okay. Um, struct instead, of like dotting, kind of like, instead of like dotting onto it, we use the colon, double colon? Yeah, because we're doing it on um, the struct itself. And so if you look, if you hover over string and you scroll down in the examples, uh, you'll see they give an example, let hello equal string colon colon from. Okay. So you're creating um, a string from a literal string. Okay. And then if you scroll down, you see hello dot push. So you were calling, we're using the dot notation there because we're accessing a method on the instance of a string. Okay. So I know that's like, at least it was a little confusing to me, so it might be a little bit confusing. Um, when no, you I think, I mean, it kind other. of makes sense where you were constructing, okay. I mean, it's similar, it's still similar to JavaScript, at least a little bit in my mind, where if you want to make a new yeah. string, you can use the string constructor um, to, yeah. that, you know, it turns into an object, which then you can mess, mutate and mess with, which is, seems like what we're doing right here. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think, cool. no, I think, you, yeah, that make that makes sense when you explain it that way. Cool. Yeah. So okay, now so we've got we're going to call. This is our guess. And now yep. let's, let's see, we're going to do something with reading from our, our terminal or our, yeah, our console here. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, so I'm just going to write some stuff. Another IO, what you said was access, like accessing the console. Is that what you said? Yeah, essentially. So like IO is like input output. So um, essentially like, you know, we're creating a new like STD in. Um, so if you hover over, it kind of explains it for us. Okay. Uh, when operating in a console, so right, so we're going to be operating from like a terminal, so we're going to use this, um, and we're calling the read line method, and so we're saying, hey, when we're operating on the console, um, read whatever is you know essentially entered into the console, and then take that, um, and like pass it, like pass the buffer to the thing that we pass in, which actually, I have too many uh, parentheses. And so that's when we pass in guess. Um, okay. And so this this like uh, this and. and symbol, yeah. yeah. So that's that's a little bit more advanced. Um, essentially, 
uh, it's the reference operator. So um, if we just, if we take out mute for a second and we just had like, and guess. So we're referencing this guess. Um, so we're referencing it, but we want, we want to mutate it. So we want a mutable reference. So that's why we use the moot keyword right there. Um, if you scroll down in the docs, it kind of explains it a little bit as well. Um, uh, just about the, the mute, the variables and mutability. Yeah, so the and indicates that this argument is a reference, which we just talked about, which gives you a way to let multiple parts of your code access one piece of data without needing to copy that data into memory multiple times. So this is kind of like, this gets more into the complex features of Rust and memory management and ownership and things like that, which is explained later in the book. Um, okay. So right now we don't need to know a ton. Uh, references in general are immutable uh, by default. So that's why we add that moot keyword there. Uh, so we're referencing guess because we want to use it here and we're, it's mutable. So essentially what we're going to do is read from the console and read the, essentially the input from the user into guess, like we're going to store it in guess. Okay. Um, so reading it, <laughs> muting guess, storing it into that, that guess variable. Exactly. Okay. And so again, if you hover over read line, um, you can see the function signature. And you see the return type is IO colon colon result. Okay, I see that. Uh, so result, if we scroll down a little bit to the examples, uh, you kind of see this like fun, what, this match statement essentially. Um, so again, we're, you know, we're getting a little bit ahead. We're gonna talk about match statements a little bit farther down in our program. Um, but result can, it's essentially like an enum. And so it can either be an okay, or an error, so okay meaning it was successful, an error meaning something wrong happened. Uh, and because of that, we just, we're doing this like shorthand, like error handling, where we call dot expect. And so if we get an error, then we're gonna essentially print this to the console, fail to read line. Okay. So if we go, so back, we go back to, yeah. Yeah, so we did the expect. Okay, so now we're saying, are we just, are we automatically going to be failing them? Is that what's happening here? Uh, no, we're not going to be failing them. If they, Well, they should give us input and it should just work. Oh, it just tells um, you. Okay. It just tells Yeah, so. So the expect, is that like a catch? Kind of, yeah, exactly. That's okay. a good way to think of it. Yeah. And then last, we'll just add this print ln. We can say you guessed, and again, you know, that's kind of where we see those like uh, like crab pinchers. I think is what I heard them referenced once as yeah. the placeholder, and then okay. the second argument, what what we replace with it. So, gotcha. So can we yes. run this and see what we got? Let's so do it. Guess the number. Please input your guess. So I say three. You guess three. Great. Did I need to push enter? Cool. I assume I needed to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. It's pretty simple. So we've got a main function, a couple basically console logs or like print printing to the your console, your terminal. We've got a one variable and we're reading from the terminal with IO, from the console with IO. Uh, yep. And then we're printing guess. So this is like our template string passing in our guest after it's been mutated. Exactly. Sweet. Okay. It's not bad. Yeah. It's easy. Easy enough. Right. Yeah. So we got a, you know, first milestone processing a guess. Yeah. All right. So storing values variables. Next we'll create a place to store the user input. Uh, okay. So I already did this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I did talk about the difference between adding this mute and not adding it. So one's mutable, one's immutable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Up oh, handling a potential failure. All right. So yeah, we talked about that. The expect is how we handle, you know, any errors you might get. Exactly. And then we print it to the line. 
All right, are we doing, okay, so generating a secret number. That's, is that the next step here? Yes. So, yeah, so do you wanna? Yeah, well, I can do this part. What, uh, okay. are we just doing this? Let's see. It's yeah, so first thing. R. Yeah, walk me through that. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is open the cargo Tomo file. Okay, give me one second. Okay. And I'll just follow you. Cool. Okay. And then, well, let me know when you're ready. All right, I'm ready. Cool. Okay. So we'll go under dependencies. And on line 10, you want to add RAND, R A N D, uh, equals. And then in quotes, 0 0.5.5. Cool. Okay. Easy enough. Sweet. So, yeah. So, we're, it's interesting because this is something that, like, like kind of like a gotcha or a little bit when I started writing some Rust, I was like, well, wait a second. Like, I'm going in and manually adding this in. Like, isn't there like a cargo add rand or something? Yeah. And, Right, because like of like M like yarn add or like npm install and um, for sure I from what I've like read online, it's not a, a feature built into cargo. There's like something a crate or something that was created by the community that lets you do that, okay. um, which I haven't tried, but I know there's discussion of potentially getting that feature in cargo itself. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice to to have a CLI tool or something you can use to just add packages without having to man manually write them out. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Okay, so should we so, build this? Is that the next yeah, step? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So run cargo builds. So this will essentially like compile and build the project so that we could run it. So it's going to look at the cargo tunnel. It's going to be like, hey, you added a, dep a dependency. I don't have that. Let me pull that down from crates.io, which is uh, the official registry for rust packages or rust crates as they call them okay cool does it create so, a do we need to create a cargo.lock file um or do we already see. have that it, it should have having... created it for you oh yeah that's true okay we do have that cool okay so. Update a crate to get a new version. Okay, so that's just cargo update that I'm assuming. So that's kind of like NPM, right? So you say update and then yeah. it'll go through all your packages and update. Yeah. Oh, should we be on 0 0.6? Um, well, okay. I wonder. So if you go into the cargo toml, um, if RLS is working, like if the VS code extension is working, it should show to the right the most, the latest version. It's not working for me right now, but maybe it yeah, is for you. See that. No, I don't see that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll just stick with this version, I think, because I think the remainder of the tutorial goes through it with okay. uh, 0 0.5.5. Okay. All right. So now we're at generating a random number. Is that where you're at as well? Yeah. Okay. So back inside the main... We are, okay, so this is where we're going to do this let uh, secret number thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. You want to drive here? Yeah, I can do that. Cool. So they've got it right here. Let secret. What was this? Secret. Secret underscore, underscore number. number. And so this, what is the R, the RAND package doing? Like what so is the RAND here? Yeah, so the RAND package, um, I like to think of it like math.random. Uh, so like math.random, like, right, it's just a global, like it's just, you can just use it in JavaScript. You don't import anything. But here, you know, we're importing this crate um, because it's outside, I guess, of the standard library. So um, okay. it's kind of, I don't know, like the, the APIs, um, kind of interesting. So again, you know, if you hover over, so rand, it's like a random number generator, thread RNG, uh, retrieve the lazily initialized thread local num random number generator, 
seeded by the system. Sounds super complex and fancy. And then, you know, yeah. generate range, which is more like, okay, this, you know, I, I get this. You, um, you start at one and it goes to 101 um, and it's inclusive in the beginning, like the initial number and exclusive at the end. So it's going to be between one and 100. Okay. And I just, on line two, I just imported, uh, or I'm using grand. So now we're not doing mm -hmm. IO. What is RNG? Yeah, so good question. So if you hover over, it'll say pub trait RNG RNG core. Okay. So I actually have not gotten to this part in the book yet uh, about traits. Mm -hmm. So I can't explain it probably right now. Okay. Um, it explains it a little bit, but I think traits are, they're kind of like they add functionality to things. So you're not okay. like ca calling something, but because it's in the scope, you know, we can, we can use it. So my assumption is this trait RNG adds something to the Rand like namespace so that we can call it. Okay. Um, that's my best guess. Gotcha. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So now we've got our secret number. I'm sure this is a squiggly. I'm getting a yellow squiggly. Is that telling me that I'm not using it anywhere? Yeah. Weird. It says unused imports, but we're using it right here. That's um, strange. I might have spelt it wrong. I purposely didn't copy and paste it just to make sure that I, <laughs> just to help me learn it a little bit better. Yeah, actually, let's try something. So um, in the terminal, can you run cargo check? So cargo check essentially uh, like compiles the project without generating output. Okay. Uh, and so it's a good way, it's like a faster way to like check, hey, am I doing everything? Like, is my code, does it compile? Okay. Is it type safe? Is it, is the compiler happy? Cool. Uh, That's nice. Yeah. So, er so I think we're worked. good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so so we did that. if you want to add the line uh, print LN and then the secret number is, and then we can just oh. verify that it's working. Yes, let's do that. Here, secret number. So now we can do cargo run. Wait, is it run? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Secret number is 48. Cool. I'm curious. Cool. So, why did we do 101? Is it like everything up until 101? So that way we include 100? Exactly. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, and if you hover over uh, gen underscore range, so it says generate a random number or value in the range, inclusive of low, exclusive of high. Got it. Makes sense. Sweet. Okay. So cool. we have our number, we have our guess. What's next? All right. Next, uh, comparing the guess to the secret. So we've got our, yeah, we've got our two numbers. Now we need to compare them. Looks like we're bringing in something else. Ooh, and this one's yep. got a double colon too. We got, I mean, double, double <laughs> colon. We've got STD <laughs> CMP ordering. Why, yeah. why don't you walk us through this part? Okay. Okay, so same thing. Uh, we're gonna throw this up at the top, use STD. So STD means it's from the standard library. CMP, okay. I actually had to look this up because at first, I was like, "What? Like, why is it called CMP?" Um, so I believe that it's short for compare. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to be comparing two numbers. Um, so ordering is an enum. So enum essentially, you know, there's different variants, uh, and we're going to use that in our program. So if we go down to line twenty, we're going to throw in what's called a match statement. So um, I think the closest thing in JavaScript is a switch statement. Okay. Uh, which is not like, I think some people will say that it's not true pattern matching because it's, you know, it's limited to like one value and you can't do as right. much. Um, this is a little bit more powerful. So we're going to call guess.cmp. Um, and then we're going to pass in a reference to secret number. Okay. Um, 
So why do we do, do you, I think you said this, so why are we doing a reference here? Why can't I just like put secret number by itself? So. Cause like up here on the print line, we just have secret number without the ampersign on line 10, right. but then we have to use it here. Right. Um, so this has to do with ownership and if we were to pass it, so I, from my understanding, if we were to pass it without the amper sand, like without the and sign, okay. um, we would be passing ownership to this, uh, like this part of the program. And so after the match statement uh, was over, like down here, um, secret number would no longer be accessible. Hmm. Interesting. For, I believe so. Um, we might be we might be able to actually like verify that, but. Um, the error that I get is it's a type error. Okay, wait. Let's. Why don't you show that actually? So, like, if you, if you have, whenever I hover over a secret number, it's telling me that it's a yeah. type error. Like that's why it's the red squiggly. Oh, that. Okay, that we will fix in a second. That has to do oh, with um, something different. I think it's just, yeah. Got it. So let's. We can we can try it out actually and just kind of like learn from the errors. Um, so let's do this right like that. And then, so what we're going to do, like the match statement is, you know, similar to a switch statement, you've got these different branches. Um, so what we're saying is we want to compare guess to secret number. Um, gotcha. So we're going to call it ordering and then colon, colon, less. And so um, if the number that you're guessing is less than the secret number, we're going to say, hey, that's too small. And, you know, as you can imagine, greater, same thing, but you know it's too high or too big, I guess. Um, gotcha. And then if they get it right, we're gonna say equal. So this is kind of cool. Um, at least I thought it was kind of cool. Like, yeah, you know, the ordering is built into the standard library. Um, it's pretty. I would say the API is pretty readable. Um, you know, even being new to Rust, so. Yeah, the real Don says the match statement in Rust is absolute fire. Oh yeah, who said that? You said uh, the real Don in the chat. Oh okay, okay, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right, it is. Uh, it's pretty. I've done a little bit of you know us like use it in a few programs and like it's yeah it's pretty awesome. Um, it would be cool if like JavaScript or you know TypeScript had something similar. Yeah, it's just statement. You get close, but you know it's not the same. Sure. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's actually. Um, okay. So I think I think my since we're like doing uh, live share, I can't see the errors. So you said there's a type error. Yeah. So we're getting a type error on secret number. It's saying uh, mismatch types expected string string and found an integer. Cool. So yeah. So we're so guess is of type string. Secret number is an integer. And so we right. don't want to compare those because there's two different types, right? Right. Um, and actually, like, even if you weren't using, like, VS Code or, like, say the extension wasn't working, like, can you run, or sorry, I'll do it. If we run yeah, cargo ahead. check, so we get that same error message here. Yep. Um, right, so, you know, it points it out. So. Yeah. So, yeah, how do, you, how do we cast into the right type or use coercion here? Yes. Yeah, good question. So um, we're going to go up to guess. Uh, ooh, okay. And this this gets interesting too. So after we get the number, so from 16 to 18, right? We've read the, uh, the input from the user. We have right. the number. So here is where we want to essentially uh, like cast it, right? Or change the type. Right. So we're going to use um, variable shadowing. Okay. So let me write Sounds, this out. Uh, pretty high tech. Interesting. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, so let me write this out and then we'll kind of walk through it. Um, so, okay. So variable shadowing, right? So, you know, were you like, that is essentially like we're using, we're shadowing the name. So we're okay. using the same name. So up here, 
it's you know an empty string. When we get to here, we change guess into uh, essentially an integer. Hmm. Um, so we'll kind of go through. So the colon and then the U32, this is a type annotation. Okay. Um, U32, like t uh, numbers are a little bit confusing to me in Rust still because there's so many different types. Um, it explains it a little bit in this doc. Uh, so like the, the defaults for integers is uh, U32, which is an unsigned 32-bit integer. So unsigned meaning uh, it doesn't matter, like there's no sign to it, like there's no positive or negative sign. Um, so it's, it's positive essentially. Okay. Um, and you know, in the docs, they say it's a good default choice for a small positive number. Uh, and they talk about number types more in chapter three, uh, and go into a lot more depth. Um, yeah. So why do we need that? Like, we'll see that in one second. So, um, guess is a string trim trims the leading and trailing white space. The Makes reason sense. we have to do that is because when you are typing in your number to the command line and you hit enter, it adds a line break. And so we want to cut that. Okay. Parse. And then parse um, is a general. Pretty explanatory puts it into a number, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's interesting though, the one thing that I learned when I was going through this again, parse is general. Um, so can, like if you re, if you hover over and read about it, it's so general it can oh, cause problems. Oh, one with second, type. I lost my my audio. Okay. You hear me? Dun 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 dun. dun. Hey. All right, I'm gonna hop on the chat while you're. I know that they can hear you still talking. So go, go ahead and keep going while I figure this oh, out. Can't? Okay, okay. All right, cool. All right, let me just say hey to Don real quick. My headphones died. I brought backup headphones just in case. Okay, so we're going to keep going while Tyler is kind of getting that, getting his audio figured out. So, okay. So yeah, so parse, like I said, it's general. So the, this can cause problems with type type inference. So the the reason uh, that we add the type or we add the type annotation because of that, because it's so general, it doesn't know. I'm not sure what guess is going to be. I can't infer it. Can you explicitly annotate it? And so that's why we add that. Uh, the expect is the same thing, right? So parse. If you look at it, it returns a result. So again, it can be okay or error. We want to handle the error case, so we can just do the shorthand and say dot expect. Um, so um, I should be able to, let's see, kind of run this. So we'll run cargo check. And just kind of a quick way, hey, am I doing things right? OK. Then we'll run cargo run. It's going to build. It's going to run. Please input your guess. So we see the secret number is 45. I'm intentionally going to guess lower. Too small, right? So our program ends right there because we have yet to implement a loop so that the user can guess multiple times. And that's going to be the next thing. And just so we can show that the error message is working, we're going to run it again. Uh, and notice how much faster it was because it's already been compiled. So it doesn't uh, like unnecessarily compile twice. It's like, hey, I'm already, the code's already compiled. Let's run. Uh, secret number is 80. So we're going to type in a string. I'm going to type in hello. So here, the thread panics. We get the message, please type a number. All right, so not the most user friendly, so we're going to fix that up later. But you get the point that uh, the message from our expect call uh, is shown to the user. So. Um, no, I'm still, still fighting audio <laughs> issues. So keep going, right? Yeah, Joe. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so well, Tyler's kind of doing that. We're just going to keep going. And if you have questions, you know, feel free to stop me in the chat. Um, I'm checking that every, every few minutes or so. Cool. Mm -hmm. So if we come back, okay, so we're just going to scroll down, you know, and again, we're going through this tutorial. It explains it a little bit more in depth. Uh, we're just, you know, the point of this is to kind of show you what it's like to build a, a small program. Cool. So the next section 
is exactly what we're talking about, allowing multiple guesses while looping or with looping rather. So here, um, you know, you'll see in the example, uh, if you, well, if you have the docs up, a uh, loop is, is essentially this keyword, right, for, for a loop. So what we're going to do um, is throw this all in a loop. So I'm going to create a loop block. I'm going to select everything here and paste that in. Um, another thing I want to show, oh, cool, it formatted for us. Okay, I was going to show you something. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you didn't have that set up for some reason, you can run cargo FMT and it will format your code for you. Uh, but you know, it looks like the editor already took care of that for us. Cool, so if we scroll down, um, so right now if we were to run as it is, just with everything in this loop, we'll run cargo run, you can kind of see what happens. As you might be thinking, like, how do we stop, right? If I, it would just go on forever uh, until, you know, unless I typed in something um, wrong that made it panic. So we want to stop the loop, right? When, um, when the number is correct, things like that. <clears throat> so how do we tell the loop, hey, quit? So what we can do is quit when we get the correct guess. So uh, what we're gonna do is change this ordering colon colon equal branch. So um, you'll notice, you know, you don't have to use the curly brackets, but if you wanna create a block, we do. So we need a block. So what we're gonna do is print ln uh, and we're going to say you win. And then we're going to use the break keyword. So the break keyword is used within a loop and says, hey, uh, if you get here, break out of the loop. And that's what we want. So now let's run it again. We'll run cargo run. It'll compile. It'll run. The secret number is 32. Please input your guess. So let's test uh, higher, bigger. Cool, 67. Too big. Still 32. Let's guess 32. Cool, we get you in, and I've used an at sign instead of an exclamation point, so let's change that. Cool, so our break's working, our loop is working. Pretty good, right? Well, uh, there's one thing that we are going to change, and that's handling invalid input. Uh, so essentially, you know, we saw that kind of ugly panic message uh, that happens when we enter something that's not a number or not an integer. So we're going to change that. Um, and we're actually gonna refactor our, uh, on line 21, we're gonna use a match statement. So what we're going to do is match on uh, guess, like the, the parse, right? So remember that parse returns a result. So results can return an outcome that is perfect, perfectly suited for a match statement. So what we're going to do is delete that. We're gonna, so match is the keyword and the thing you're matching on and then the block. And then you have the different branches. So the first branch is gonna be okay. Uh, and what you can do is okay returns a value. And so we can name that value. And so we're gonna name it num. And then we're gonna have an arrow and we're just gonna return num, right? And so what that does is if we uh, we get the guess, we trim it, we parse it into an integer. If it returns, if it's successful, we get a number, we just return the number. And we do that because now guess is equal guess, to that number, trim it. right? Because it, it's it uh, equal to whatever is returned from the branch on the match statement. Now, if it's an error, we don't really need that value. Right, so we're going to use an underscore to whatever is returned and then we're going to say continue. And we do this, this is another keyword within the loop block. And so we say, hey, if we get an error, continues so like restart the loop. So let's test this out. So I'm gonna run cargo run. We're gonna compile, we're gonna build, we're gonna run. Okay, the secret number is 26. So okay, let's see I, I, what I can happens. hear you now, but uh, I'm a, I have a little bit of a lag, so keep going. Okay, so right now we're just to get you back up to speed in case, because I guess you couldn't hear. Um, We've added a little bit better error handling. So now if we type in something that's not a string, sorry, if it's not an integer, 
uh, we should just continue the loop. So I'm going to type okay. in hello. Cool. So it says the secret number is 26. So uh, this actually isn't in the uh, tutorial, but I added it in my own version. Uh, let's refactor that error part of the match statement. And let's print ln and say, you know, oops, that doesn't look like a number. Uh, please try again. And then we're going to throw the continue afterwards. Uh, make sure semicolon. Cool. So does that make sense, Tyler? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now yeah. let's let's do it one more time. So if we run cargo run, let's input a string. Hello. So now we get our error message. Oops, that doesn't look like a number. Please try again. So it looks a little bit better. So there's one last thing we need to do. Uh, we're printing the secret number, which we don't want. So we're going to delete that line. Cool. Um, so Tyler, are you still there? So Rick's yeah, got a question. I'm, I'm pretty pretty delayed, so just keep going without me. I'm listening though. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So that's our program. So real quick, just gonna head back to the chat. Uh, we got a question. So from Rogue, kind of an off-topic question. I was reading the docs and wasn't really sure of a good example, good examples and bad examples using box. Sometimes I get to Stack Overflow and it says to wrap it in a box, but how often do you heap allocate versus work around Stack allocate? That one is that one's gonna be beyond me. Unfortunately, Rogue, I, um, it's funny you bring up Box because I uh, was doing a little bit of Rust at work and Box was being used. And that's, again, that's new to me. Like I, um, I've only read the first three chapters or three or four of the Rust book. So I haven't gotten to Box. So unfortunately, I can't answer that. Um, maybe someone else on the stream can. And if not, you know, maybe we can follow up on Twitter and uh, see if we can figure it out together. Cool. So, thanks, Cami. So let's just uh, let's just do a quick run through of what we just built. Um, you know, because you know we we have a program. It's it's working. We're handling the errors. There's no warnings, no error messages from the compiler. So let's just kind of re recap what we just built. So the use statement, right? We've got three here. We're using either external crates or we're using things from the built-in standard library. Uh, so remember, STD stands for standard, like the standard library. Uh, so RAND, that's our crate for generating a random number. The second is CMP ordering. That's an enum that allows us to compare two integers. And then last, the IO module is essentially what allows us to read input from the command line and then work with it. Uh, then we have, we have just our our program is just one big block, one function, essentially the main function, right? And so remember, your REST programs need a main function. That's what's called when you run it. So we print a message to the command line or the terminal. We say, hey, guess the number. Uh, and then in the background, we generate a secret number. And we use the RAN crate. And we generate between the range of 1 and 101. And remember, it's inclusive. At the and beginning the and rate. exclusive at the end. So the possible the options are 1 through 100. 101. Then Remember, we have our loop block. And we loop because we want to allow the user to guess multiple times. So once we enter our loop block, the first thing we say is, hey, please input your guess. So we ask them for a number. Um, in the background, we're creating an empty string, which is where we'll store their guess. Then we're using the IO module to read the line. So we read what they enter and essentially pass that buffer into our guess so that we can work with it. We have this expect because for some reason, if it fails, we want to handle that case, right? So we're handling the successful case and the unsuccessful case. Next thing we do um, is we're, you know, we're redeclaring guess. So we're uh, shadowing the variable so that we don't have to have guess and then like guess integer when we parse it from a string to an integer. So this is nice, like we don't have to 
think about, um, you don't have to have like unnecessary variables essentially. So then what we do is we match on guess. We call trim because when the user hits enter, it adds a line break. We don't want that. So we trim that, which trims the leading and trailing white space. Then we parse it. Uh, we parse as general. And so because of that, we have to annotate the type saying, hey, this is an unsigned 32-bit integer. Essentially, that's just, it's a small positive number. Uh, and then we match because parse returns a result, which can be either okay, meaning it's successful, or error, meaning something went wrong, right? Like they put in something that's not a number. Uh, if it's okay, we get the number back. If it's an error, we print and say, oops, that doesn't look like a number, please try again. And then we continue the loop. So essentially like we go back and go to the next iteration of the loop so that they can enter a new guess and try again. Um, we print their guess so that they can, you know, it's kind of like a verification like, hey, or validation like, hey, I typed in, you know, 25, is that what you got? And so we say, yes, we got, you guessed 25. Then we got our second match block. Uh, we're taking guess and we're calling compare and we're comparing guess with our secret number. And because we parsed guess, this is an integer and secret number is an integer. And um, we don't need to own it, so we're referencing it. And that's what the and, and symbol is. Uh, and then we have three possible cases. It can be less than, in which we tell them, hey, that's too small. It can be greater than, in which we say, hey, that's too big. Or if they guess it correctly, we can say, hey, it's equal, you win, we break from the loop and our program exits gracefully or successfully. Um, cool. So we have some cool. new people yeah. who have entered. I'm, I'm still listening. Yeah. Sounds all good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. Uh, Rogue, thanks for hanging out with us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, so that's, that's really it, Tyler. We've, you know, we've built this program kind of like a good first stepping stones. Into yeah, I'll, I'll post this GitHub code. Okay. How simple is it to add a GUI on top of a Rust game like this? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, hmm. I don't know off the top of my head. I haven't built anything like yeah. that or really looked into it. Um, so that's something that Tyler and I would have to check out. But I want to say it wouldn't be too hard. But, you know, again, that's without uh, like hard evidence or something that we can point to. Cool, Tyler, uh, should we wrap up here? Or what do you think? Yeah, like I was saying, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna put it, commit everything that we've done today, put, yeah, put it on like a GitHub. Uh, I'll post the link here in, in the chat. And, um, but yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, hit up Joe for any other questions you might have. Uh, he's, he's gonna be the go-to for rest. Uh, if you do have questions, definitely, you know, let, let me know. I'll. Hopefully I'll post this to YouTube to Twitch. Uh, I think Joe's going to post it on the Facebook open source uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, so you yep. can catch this video uh, there. Uh, hopefully I can do some a little blog post as well later on, uh, some, putting together some of the notes that uh, some of the stuff that we talked about today. Um, but other than that, Joe, if there's any other questions you see in the chat you want to answer, I think uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me, Tyler. This is a lot of fun. Um, looking forward to, you know, maybe doing some more rust or some other streaming in the future. Sounds good. Thanks. Talk to everyone later. Cool. See y'all. Thanks for joining.